Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate that. Well, it's good to be here at the end of a day in which there's been a lot of excitement here on the floor, a lot of uh, voting going on, a lot of a debate, which is what we're up here for. And one of the things that I have uh, committed to, as we talked about a little bit last week, is pointing out uh, some things that may uh, fall under a little bit under the radar, but actually matter a great deal to the people of not only the Ninth District, but to the people of, of uh, the United States. And up here, we can get uh, many times lost in what I'll call the, the, the big picture items or the, the latest uh, of what's hot, so to speak. And tonight, I want to talk about our local pharmacists. Uh, for me, that is, I have a little pharmacist I go to. We have several, but one of the main ones I go to is, is Woody's Pharmacy, Kevin Woody. And I go in there, and I know that when I ask him about the drugs for my, myself, for my wife, my kids, he gives me answers, he helps me, he uh, know why they interact, what goes on. And, and we got pharmacists in, in all kinds of settings that do that every day for folks. But our local pharmacies, and especially our community pharmacies, are right now under attack. And I want to talk tonight, and I'm going to be joined hopefully here in a little bit with uh, the gentleman from Pennsylvania, uh, to talk about the challenges facing independent community pharmacies. You see, local pharmacists play a vital role in America's neighborhoods and communities, particularly in more rural areas of northeast Georgia. They provide unparalleled guidance and assistance and resources for families, including my own. I'm committed to protecting access to independent and community pharmacists and helping to level the playing field through an effective and robust oversight of the pharmacy benefit managers, or PBMs. It's a tough enough task to survive in this economy, and the overregulation by the administration is only making it more difficult. I'm committed to working with my colleagues, particularly the gentleman from Pennsylvania, to promote legislation that would provide consumers with greater choice of pharmacies, require standards for PBM pharmacies, support access to diabetes testing supplies, protect traditional pharmacy compounding, and ensure that our military families can enjoy the many benefits that community pharmacies provide. In many cases, independent community pharmacists have dedicated their career to providing quality patient care. However, they have been continually, continuously cut by unfair reimbursements, overbearing audits, and a take-it-or-leave-it approach to contracts. Over the next 30 minutes, I look forward to discussing the challenges facing independent uh, and community pharmacists and the important role they play in the lives of many of our constituents. Although we cannot sufficiently cover these issues in the next half hour, I hope this will be the first of many conversations on this floor about an important topic. And this is what I mean about ideas and topics that may not uh, bring the headlines, they may not bring the stories on the opening of the evening news, but they affect us daily in our lives and they're often overlooked. When we deal many times on this floor, and I've spoken of it before, is how do we deal with and what's the cost of regulation and how they are affecting uh, our everyday lives, this is one of the areas, especially with our community pharmacists, that are affecting right now. It's affecting how they do business. And as one community pharmacist told me recently, that if something doesn't change soon, that in my area of northeast Georgia, which has a vibrant community pharmacy along with PBM pharmacies and others, that within 10 years there may not be a community pharmacist left in northeast Georgia. And that's a scary thought, Mr. Speaker. When you think about that for a second, when you look at an industry that, that many of us grow up, you know, and you can have stories on going back to when uh, many pharmacists had soda stands and they had, you know, it was a, just a full service place where you could go. And even my pharmacist today still has the uh, scoops of ice cream. One of the ways my kids want to come with me to, to the store is they say, I'll go with you if you're going to Woody's because I want a scoop of ice cream. So it's just a, it's a family place. It's something that, that I think brings uh, back a, a sense of Americana, but it also hits it very idea of what we'll just take is just good old-fashioned entrepreneurship, businesses uh, that mean something to our community, but also provide a service that is invaluable. And right now, I think those are under uh, attack, and those are the things that um, just uh, concern me. And when we look at that uh, possibility of our, as, as the pharmacist told me, he said that they were possibly may not even be community pharmacists in our area within the next 10 years. That really struck my attention and it's made me, before I was even elected, begin to look at what are the problems and how can we address those uh, as we go along. The, I can give examples and I bet almost every member here on both sides of the aisle could come in and talk about their pharmacist wherever they may work, but a community pharmacist who they can call on and ask about, and my parents, uh, as they have uh, 
I've watched them grow up and they get older. We have questions about their uh, medicines. I know that I can call my pharmacist and ask him questions. I know that uh, many of yours, and maybe even you, Mr. Speaker, have that person that you can talk about for uh, the drugs and the issues that just keep us healthy. And one of the things that they also help us do and community pharmacists do is provide that preventative care that, that keeps us from getting into these long-term illnesses which drive up the health care costs, which is talked about so much on this House floor. And really, from my perspective, the, the tragedy of Obamacare is let's get back to, very, to the very roots of medicine. And as the doctors were speaking earlier tonight on the floor, it's talking about how we can do preventive medicine and look, make sure that our health of our constituents are taken care of. Community pharmacists do just that. One of the first challenges facing our local pharmacists I want to discuss here tonight relates to diabetic testing supplies and the competitive bidding process. Earlier this year, I wrote the Comptroller General, Jean Dodaro, and expressing concern about the impact that Medicare competitive bidding process will have on patients' access to diabetic testing supplies. Seniors in Northeast Georgia and across the state rely on ability to get the testing supplies from the local pharmacists, and many have written to me expressing their concerns that applying competitive bidding pricing to independent community pharmacists could negatively impact their access to these essential supplies. In more rural communities, such as Northeast Georgia, an independent community pharmacy may be the only available option for seniors. Their local pharmacist helps them properly use their test strips and meters and provides much needed resource and guidance in managing their disease. A 72 percent reduction in reimbursement for retail pharmacies that are currently supplying these items to Medicare beneficiaries was announced on January 30, 2013. This is a reduction in the reimbursement took effect on July 1 of this year. Here's some of the feedback that Georgians have given about the impact that this reimbursement reduction is having on their quality of life and access to care. We've heard things like, I've had the difficulty finding a new provider. My product of choice was unavailable. I've been forced to change providers. The quality of my care and service is poor. My costs have increased. I've experienced poor communications from CMS. I'm confused about the changes. Independent community pharmacists typically sell diabetic testing supplies to provide a service to patients, not to make money. Even before the reduction in reimbursement rates, the profit margins on these supplies were very low. Now pharmacists have to choose between keeping their business open or giving their patients the supplies and care they need. This isn't a choice they should be forced to make. In an area and a time in which our economy and jobs are suffering, this is another example of a business that is fighting against the world, so to speak, to stay in business and to employ those three or four or five or up to 10 or 15 people that take care of the people in our communities, Mr. Speaker. This is something.